Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode about Configure within the MySonet Embroidery software. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how you can change the settings within Configure so that when you export an embroidery, it's exactly in the format that you want it to be. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of MySonet, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this video, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed, but everything I show you, you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principles are exactly the same. You'll also be able to do everything that I show you today in any of the tiers of the MySonet embroidery software, including the free basic version. So you can see that I've got an embroidery in my hoop here that's made up of a number of different embroideries, including a group design. Now, if I was doing this properly, I would go to combine and then I would color sort. But in actual fact, what you can do is you can go into configure and you can set the software so it will automatically do that for you every time you export your design. And it's just a useful feature if you're doing some very specific things that sometimes you might want to change how your files are being exported. So let's actually go into configure and I'll explain what I mean. I'm on the export tab over here. The important thing to remember about the export tab is the developers have tried to build in features at this stage that will optimize your embroidery to make it look as good as possible. In most cases, you won't need to change any of the settings on the export tab. So it might be you never go in and do this. And that's fine, particularly if you're just getting started. So let me explain what these features are and talk about maybe the times that you might want to consider changing them. So the top half, you can see we've got this box that says optimize for sewing. Now, usually all four of these are checked. It's going to combine any embroideries there into a single embroidery. And if you want to, it, it will remove any overlapping stitches. And that is the software trying to make sure that um, perhaps your embroidery doesn't get too bulky. Now, the times that you might want to consider unchecking the remove overlap, there are two times. The first is if you have like a blended effect where maybe you might have different colors that overlay, you just probably want that to stay as it is. The other time might be is if you have an embroidery design for a turnable hoop, sometimes the digitizers, when they're making those, will put in extra stitches for the overlap of the turnable hoop. And of course, you're going to want those to stay there. Out of all four options, the color sort perhaps is the one checkbox that you might want to consider uh, basically unchecking. And you would do that if perhaps you were, have an older applique design, because sometimes when you uh, have the color sort feature on, it actually takes the stops out so that rather than stitching a bit, stopping so you can cut round your fabric or place your fabric, it just stitches it all through. You don't need to worry about that if you've done the applique, um, if you've created your applique within the MySonet software. It's only um, an issue with older applique embroideries. And all that you'd need to do is go into configure, go to the export tab and uncheck the color sort. Optimize stitch length. And I'm going to open the options box here. What the software is going to automatically do is it will remove any really little stitches and you can adjust the sensitivity. So if you want it to actually be very, very thorough going through quite hard, um, uh, taking out um, all those stitches, uh, you would go for the higher option. 
and you can set the stitch length that you do want to remove. So for example, at the moment, and this is the default, the software will automatically remove any stitches that are below 0.8 mil. And of course, you don't need to worry about it if you do it using cutwork needles, because those are really uh, uh, the stitches in those case are very little. So I'm going to click OK. The next section is if you have um, any decoration stitches. So this might be if in the software you have um, gone to the embellishment tab and programmed, for instance, some stitches. If they were for uh, sequins, you would check center placement. But if you have an asymmetric um, uh, embellishment of some kind, so perhaps a bugle bead, you can actually go for an option of having a line rather than just a dot. And of course, it might be that you have a an embroidery that has decoration and placement stitches that you don't want to stitch out. And of course, in that case, you can check the last option, which will actually take all of those out. Hoop orientation is if, for instance, you're like me and you like to have your hoop in a landscape form when you're digitizing, of course, it's not going to stitch out looking like that when it's on your machine. So the design will actually be rotated to fit into the natural hoop position. And if you've got any felting needles, it will actually automatically uh, flip the design for you. Let me just scroll up so we can have a look at the bottom section of this page. So let's take a moment to talk about uh, splitting for multi-part hoops. Now, what I would say is if you are actually doing a lot of work with multi-part hoops, I would actually use the um, features within my Sonet to split them properly. But if perhaps you're working quite quickly um, and you just have a single one, it's pretty good, the um, inbuilt features within uh, the export tab. So intelligence with tolerance means the software will do a split line where it's going to minimize the cuts through solid areas. And the aspect of tolerance is Essentially, how much wiggle room do you want in the overlap area? And it's a good idea to have a little bit because sometimes you might need to just slightly uh, twist your design. And if you're going right to the edge, you can't do that. So I would always say have at least one mil in your uh, tolerance box. You might actually want a little bit more, perhaps if you're working on a very stretchy fabric. Of course, the other option would be straight line with compensation. So that literally will be a straight line through the through your embroidery. Um, and that compensation is about that the software will add extra stitches in the overlap. I'd strongly recommend that you always have your alignment stitches on for a turnable hoop. They're basically a couple of little sets of stitches at the top and bottom that you can match up both sides of your hoop to. And finally, Export file name. So this is a really neat feature because um, when you go to export, it will give the file name. So in the case of my dinosaur, Rafe's dinosaur, um, when I go to export it, it will say Rafe's dinosaur exported. And that way I know it will have been color sorted. So for instance, I don't need to worry about having lots of color changes on that a decorative circle around the outside. And that's just a really uh, useful feature. And of course, if I wanted to, I could have anything that I wanted in there. And if I don't want um, amendment to happen, I, I can uh, uncheck that. But I do find that a very useful feature if I'm then looking back, well, which was the one that I actually stitched out? I'm going to know because it's going to say exported. And of course, when I've made my changes, as ever, I'm going to click apply. And those changes will have been made. As I mentioned earlier, you probably won't have to worry much about the settings on the export tab in configure unless you're doing something very specific, as I've mentioned. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy sewing.